It's all bad now, man. It's all bad. It's all done fucked up now, now, now. Now, you know, now I'm, I'm, I'm pissed. You know what I mean? Now I'm like, okay, it's a fucking game. You know, I feel like Jimmy and them's part of the game. It's a fucking game. Motherfuckers out here dying, starving. You have no fucking respect for the culture. You think it's, you a, think fucking it's a fucking game, game now? now? What up guys, your boy Quake, and I'm finally back with a brand new episode of Who Really Won. And as you can tell by the video title, this one finally involves Eminem. A lot of you have been requesting me to do one that involves Eminem, and it's finally here. If you've seen the Who Really Won episode with 50 Cent and Ja Rule, I mentioned that I would cover Eminem versus Benzino in a separate video, and the video is here, and I'm going to go over everything that happened. Eminem's battles aren't really that interesting to me, that's why I haven't covered it till now, because a lot of the battles he's had are with artists that are nowhere near his caliber in terms of celebrity status and in terms of skill. But to me, this one is the most interesting because of all the people that got involved and all the corporations that got involved. So if you're new to the series, this is how we break it down. We first started off with how the beef started, then we talk about the major points in the beef. Then after that, I voice my opinion on who won the battle portion of the beef, which is in the midst of the beef, who won the battle. Then I look at who won the war portion of the beef after the beef settled down, who had longevity, who had a better career. With that being said, grab a drink, grab some popcorn, and enjoy the episode. As you guys know, there's always three sides that I look at in this story. I look at Benzino's perspective, I look at Eminem's perspective, and I look at the fans' perspective on how this beef started. Let's talk about Benzino's side of the story. Benzino maintains that his beef is not directly with Eminem. It's more with the frustration of the music industry and how they're constantly supporting Eminem and not black artists. He says that the music industry at that time was letting Eminem get away with anything. He could say anything on a track and yet it would still be on radio, it would still be promoted, he would still go to award shows, but if a black artist did these things, he would get less recognition. So Benzino says that he attacked Eminem to get more attention on the fact that black artists aren't getting treated as well as a white artist such as Eminem. He was also frustrated at the fact that Eminem, being a white hip-hop artist, was selling a lot more albums than black artists. So to bring more attention to this and to get more coverage for black artists and to support more black artists, he decided to diss Eminem. That's what Benzino says is what started the whole situation. Uh, a lot is being made out of you going at this in Eminem. Talk about it. Oh, man. <laughs> Marshall. I'm saying it ain't really like I was going at Marshall. You know what I'm saying? Personally, I was pretty much attacking the machine. Mm -hmm. You know, Marshall's just the hood on me. And it's a situation where I think that, you know, we just got to be conscious of what's going on and like the double standard, you know, in hip hop. That's why Rap City's so important. Because, you know what I'm saying, you give, you give, you know, artists, you know what I'm saying, that probably might not be heard on a higher level, you know, a chance to be, to get their stuff out there. And we got to understand that because hip-hop came from the street, it came from the struggle. Right. I think that the powers that be took Marshall and pretty much, you know, um, dressed him up with the blonde hair and everything and set him up for a certain audience, you know what I'm saying? And then, you know, just as long as he gets the stamp from the hood, you know what I mean, then right now certain media outlets are considering him to be number one. You know, because I don't think I don't think he's number one. Maybe you know, record sales is one thing, but you know, we gotta we gotta look at see really what's going on and mm -hmm. this, you know the double standard. I know I couldn't talk about my mother and have a video showing you know her getting buried. I know I wouldn't be able to do it. Right. I think that we get censored as artists, and you know we have to make certain type of songs to get burned. So it's a situation where you know I just want it to be an even playing field. I'm not trying to take away or saying you know people don't mess with his music. I'm saying. Those, to those 8 million people, look at everybody else. Mm -hmm. Give everybody else a fair chance. 
Eminem, though, on the other hand, says that Benzino is just jealous. He's trying to get relevant and sell records of his upcoming album because at that time he was getting ready to release an album. So he used the Source magazine to go against him. And Eminem said that Benzino is just a magazine writer and that he's trying to build his career off of the Source magazine and off of his own career and that he'll never be a good rapper and that his music has never taken off. Eminem also stated that he has no idea where Benzino decided to start dissing him out of nowhere. He says he never disrespected the Source magazine or Benzino ever in his life. I mean, did something happen to spark that between you and him? Did anything happen? I mean... Angie, I swear on my daughter's life, I never met this dude. I never met this man, this girl in my life. I never met this woman. She is obsessed with me. I, can, I, I cannot understand it. And, and you can't play two sides of the fence. You can't be a rapper. You can't be a rapper and own a magazine, own half of a magazine, because then what happens is you call rappers that you like, you call them and you want them to make a guest appearance on your album, and if they don't want to do it because you suck, then that, he's going to take you out that magazine. So you can't play both sides of the fence like that. You just can't do it. So that's what motivated you to, to even... That's what motivated me. However, like I mentioned earlier, there is a third perspective, and this perspective is more of a rumored one based on track record. Now, the Source magazine used to be a hip-hop bible for anyone that wanted news on hip-hop and anyone that wanted any suggestions on what albums to buy. They used to have this section in the Source magazine called The Record Report, and that's where they would rate albums one out of five mics. If your album got four to five mics, it was a really good album, and more than likely, a lot of people would buy it. If it got anything below a four, usually it would be a bad album, and nobody would really buy it. And fans would basically worship this magazine, and whatever they said was hot, a lot of people would purchase. And this basically was the world star of that time, way before social media. So Eminem would release albums but they wouldn't get the ratings that Eminem would like and Eminem would voice his frustration with that on tracks. And this is when people said Eminem had issues with the Source magazine. When Eminem released his second album, the Marshall Mathers LP, on May 23, 2000, the first initial mic rating for this album was 2 out of 5 mics. And the backlash that the Source magazine got was insane. So much so that they had to re-rate the album and instead gave it four mics out of five because every other magazine at that time and every other reviewer and music critic gave it something like four out of five mics, four out of five stars, nine out of ten. Whatever the rating system was, it was a very high rating for that album. So because they got that backlash, they decided to re-rate it. And this is where people are saying the issues with Eminem and the Source magazine initially started because Eminem didn't understand why his album only got two mics and then got re-rated to only four mics. Then when Eminem released his third album, The Eminem Show, on May 26, 2002, on the track Say What You Say, he decided to call out the Source magazine for only giving him four mics. Five mics in the source ain't holding my fucking breath But I suffocate for the respect for I breathe to collect the fucking check What you say is what you say You know what used to bother me? Yeah, it's It's been... It's been the mic, the mic rating system in the source. Like, when I was a kid growing up in the early 90s on hip-hop, the source, as we used to know it, was the Bible of hip-hop. Like, it was, their word was gold. If somebody got four mics, you was going to cop it. If somebody got five mics, you was going to cop it. Mm. If somebody got three and a half, yeah, you know, Man. you didn't know. But right. their word was gold, and they was usually right. I know that you have yet to receive a five mic, uh review in the source is that something that, that was... i have yet to receive even a four and a half everybody gets a four everybody like that's the standard now that's the standard if you get a four and a half that must mean that benzino wants you on his album after this line on that song is when people speculated for eminem to have issues with the source magazine which would then have issues with benzino fast forward to september 25th through the 28th in 2002 and Eminem appeared in Puerto Rico for the Mixtape Summit show. While he was there, he was promoting his movie 8 Mile and decided to perform. Apparently, the rumor was that Benzino attempted 
to talk to him backstage, but Eminem ignored him because he did not get five mics for his album, The Eminem Show. However, I want to clarify, none of this was confirmed. This was just a rumor. It wasn't confirmed by Benzino that this happened, and it wasn't confirmed that Eminem ignored him. Eminem never spoke on this. However, Obi Trice got interviewed about this in July 30th, 2012 by Hip Hop DX. They asked him about the beef between Eminem and Benzino and how it even started. And in this interview, Obi confirms that Eminem was at the Mixtape Summit show and Obi did run into Benzino and they briefly talked. However, he did not confirm or deny that Eminem was ignoring Benzino or Benzino even tried to contact Eminem at that time. The Hip Hop DX interviewer said, something I like to do years after the fact is kind of go back in time with a veteran artist and revisit something I know something you were involved with was the whole Benzino situation. Could you maybe talk about what that time was like and that whole source beef? Obi Trice then said, well, the thing with the Benzino beef was that we were in Puerto Rico and I saw him out there. I was coming out with Cheers, which was his album at the time, and he said we were at the mixtape show Power Summit and I seen him out there and I said, look out for me on the Source Mag, man. Hook me up with a good review. It was just man to man, good conversation. And he was like, man, I got you, Obi. I got you, man. Don't worry about it. I got you. So that was a Saturday, and I flew home that Sunday, and that Monday, DJ Green Lantern called me from New York and was just telling me, like, dog, Benzino is on Hot 97 right now, dissing the fuck out of you. So it kind of blew me away because I'm fresh in the game, and I believe your word is everything. And at that time, I had no clue of how fickle the industry was. So based off of what Obi Trice is saying is that Obi Trice ran into Benzino and there was no issues, everything seemed fine. Then a few days later, Benzino got on Hot 97 and decided to diss Eminem and Obi Trice and the rest of the D12 group. Based on Obi Trice's response, it would have been September 30th, 2002, when Benzino went to Hot 97 and decided to diss them. Apparently in that interview, Benzino also mentioned Eminem acted strange towards him during the mixtape summit show and that's why he started going at Eminem. He said the only reason why Eminem is selling records is because he's white and he's the new 2002 Vanilla Ice and he's not going to be around forever so on and so forth. The only unfortunate thing is I could not find the audio for this interview. I looked all over the internet so you're just going to have to take my word for it based on my research. Following that, a few weeks later, on October 24th, 2002, Benzino, along with his artist Jeff Times 2, released a mixtape called Hood Stories Volume 1. And on this mixtape, there was a song called I Don't Wanna, and that's the first track where Benzino is dissing Eminem on wax. The only Eminem I know is made men. By the way, he ain't never gonna play me. I'll show this bitch what it really is to be shady. I don't care how much record you sold You can't walk through the hood without the men in black Disrespect your mom's bitch, you deserve a smack It's not a black and white thing, that shit's in the past I got some white boys from Boston that'll bust your ass, nigga Following that, on October 30th, 2002 50 Cent and G-Unit decided to take over Hot 97 Because Angie Martinez was on the road Because she was a judge for American Idol So 50 Cent took it over alongside Lloyd Banks and Tony Yayo, and while there, Eminem decided to call in. When Eminem called in, he talked about his new movie, 8 Mile, and then started trolling on air. He said, I want to request that new Benzino record. It's hot. See if you can find that and play it for me. You may have to dig in the trash. It may be in the bottom of the trash can. 50 Cent then basically played the record, which was the diss, I don't wanna. Then Eminem said, it's like when you buy a product from the store, a blender, you get it home and try to use it, but it doesn't work. Then he continued dissing him and then made up the name Has Been Zeno and said, I don't know about that. I don't know if he's ever been popping. Unfortunately, I could not find the audio of this. I was looking all over the place, but could not find it. I could only find the script of what they said when this was happening. The crazy thing is, though, on this day later that night, Jam Master J was murdered. So let's not forget that. Let's send RIP condolences to him. Following that, in early November 2002, Benzino decided to respond with another diss track on Wax called Pull Your Skirt Up. And on this track, he was dissing Eminem and Obi Trice. 
Let me start from the beginning. You ain't reppin' the streets. No. You from the outskirts of Detroit, where the bitches meet. I'm gonna pull your skirt up, expose your true sex, Bitch. antagonize your label till I get my respect. Oh, yo, you ran to your manager, ask him how to handle this. Five shades darker, motherfucker, you be cannabis. Sega. You was unsigned hype before you ever met Dre. That's my I shit. birthed your little career, now you owe your life to Ray. Uh -huh. The five might give her, the Marshall Maggot Ripper. After this diss track came out, it was official. Benzino had released two new diss tracks against Eminem, and Eminem had not responded at all. He was silent on this situation besides the time when he called in for the 50 Cent radio host show on Hot 97. But other than that, there was no diss tracks from Eminem. And the reason why, according to Eminem, was because his manager, Paul Rosenberg, wasn't trying to start a beef with Benzino. He was trying to hash it out. Then randomly, a few weeks later, on November 21st, 2002, Late Night DJ K Slay on Hot 97 premiered two new Eminem diss tracks going at Benzino. One was called The Sauce, and the other was called Nail in the Coffin. When the unsigned hype column and the source was like the only source of life. When the mics used to mean something, the four was like you were the shit. Now it's like the least you get. Three and a half now just means you a piece of shit. Four and a half. You biggie jigger knives of Benzino See, I don't even think you realize You playing with motherfuckers lives I don't watch Ray get fucked on the chronic Probably cause I was on it Now you fucked me out of my mics twice I let it slide I said I wouldn't hold my fucking breath To get a five shit I was right I'd have fucking died already trying You sit behind a fucking desk at the source Butt kissing and begging motherfuckers For guest appearances And you can't even get the clearances Cause real lyricists don't even respect you Or take you serious it's not that we don't like you, we hate you, period. After these two diss tracks dropped, it was official. Both artists have gone on wax responding to each other with diss tracks. Then a few weeks later, and the DJ Green Lantern Invasion Part 1 Shady Times mixtape came out. And on this mixtape, there was a few more diss tracks going at Benzino. The first title track was called Invasion, also known as We The Realist Track. And Obi Trice decided to respond to Benzino himself with a track called Welcome to Detroit City. Here we go, I should've known I was bound to get pulled into some bullshit Sooner or later, you little haters are too jealous of us to love us You hated it, you ain't made it Then Obi's coming, these twizzies coming, you're sick to your stomach 50% of it's 50 cent The other 50% of it's whose color of skin it is But if you're even considering taking our label down You better find our building and fly a fucking plane in the wind What's strange to me? <laughs> been in the game and Obi just came and he ain't got more fame than me that's wild blame it on the white boy nigga that's your style we're rapping it ain't happening fathom the thought stick to journalism that's your heart and apart from responding i know the source will tell him don't cop him huh? Obi trice's album's not popping huh? then on december 5th 2002 benzino responded and he released a new track with a video called Die Another Day. And on this track and video, he went all out dissing Eminem. He basically blamed Eminem for being a white supremacist in hip hop. He went at Eminem's manager, Paul Rosenberg. He went at Eminem's daughter and threatened her life. He even went at 50 Cent, D12, and Obi Trice. Basically, everything and everyone affiliated with Eminem. <laughs> Then, just a few weeks later, on December 23rd, 2002, Eminem decided to call into Hot 97 and talk with Angie Martinez about this whole beef and how it escalated to this point. Following that, Benzino decided to release his own mixtape going at Eminem and the Shady Aftermath camp, and the mixtape was called Benzino Presents Die Another Day Flawless Victory, and he released this on January 1st, 2003. And on this mixtape, there were quite a few new diss tracks going at Eminem and the rest of the Shady Camp. In the beginning, he decided to do an intro of Eminem, basically shouting out the source, thanking them for the support in the past. Then he decided to leak Paul Rosenberg's alleged conversation with him on the phone. And then he decided to put a bunch of different diss tracks. He included the Pull Your Skirt Up track. He included the Die Another Day, and he included the I Don't Want a track, but he also included other tracks such as Load em Up, which was a new diss track, Fuck the Tough Talk, Better Lose Yourself, and much more. Eminem still on Benzino Day, talking about him dead broke, then you must be crazy. Every time you up in the source, your label gotta pay me. Make 
me come to Detroit and put the gun to Halo. Have everybody like Zeno going crazy. Top of it. I don't care how many nails you put in my coffin. Ask your baby mom why she take flights to Boston. Ain't anybody like why you fucking with M? He made three disc records. Man, I'm under his skin. You better stick to this and cats like Fred Durst and Britney. I'm a made man. It's kind of hard to hit me. Don't think the guns won't blow because you sign 50. After this, then Benzino released his new album on January 14th, 2003 called Redemption. The album unfortunately did not perform well. The album only sold 20,000 copies within the first week. And the album featured the diss track Pull Your Skirt Up. And he decided to work with a lot of people that 50 Cent had issues with at that time such as Lil' Kim, Black Child, and Cadillac Ta for Murder, Inc. After this is when the magazine war officially started because in February 2003, the source released a new magazine with Ja Rule on the cover who was having issues with 50 Cent at that time. And on that magazine, Benzino was interviewed about his album and interviewed about his issues with Eminem and decided to diss him throughout the whole magazine. He sat down with the source interviewer and the interviewer said, You've been quite outspoken recently about a lot of things, including the state of hip-hop. What do you think about the direction we're headed in? Benzino then said, definitely a dangerous path, because while it's going mainstream, hip-hop's forgotten about the little guys, and that's real harmful. That's why I talk about the machine and Eminem. The mainstream is dictating our creativity. The interviewer then asks, define dictating our creativity. He then says, we have to do a certain type of song to get played on the radio. Now that the powers that be have somebody whose skin color they can relate to, everything is fine. Nobody is saying anything about Eminem or what he is rapping about. We get censored all the time when we talk about getting our asses beat by the police or other sorts of injustices. Then the interviewer asks, what was your motivation for recording those diss tracks? He said, he's the hood ornament on the big truck. You have to go at him. There are a lot of people in this world who buy hip-hop, but they don't like us. They like the beats and the rhymes, but they don't like us. So now the Eminem machine has sucked all the sales away from every artist. Then the interviewer says, but you can't deny that Eminem is on top of his game right now and is considered one of the top MCs. You recognize his talent, don't you? Benzino then said, yes, definitely. Then the interviewer asked, has anyone from Eminem's camp tried to contact you? Benzino then said his manager, Paul Rosenberg, but this guy is just selling out Eminem. The interviewer then says, if M wanted to have a sit down with you, would you do it? Benzino surprisingly said, yes, I would do it. Following this magazine release and interview on February 18th, 2003, the Cradle to the Grave soundtrack was released and on the song Go to Sleep it featured Eminem, Obi Trice and DMX and Eminem and Obi Trice decided to diss Benzino and Eminem towards the end decided to call out Ja Rule and from this diss track is when Ja Rule got involved with dissing Eminem and everybody got intertwined. If you want to see that portion of the beef where 50 Cent and Ja Rule go at it and Eminem and Ja Rule go at it, I covered it with 50 Cent versus Ja Rule who really won parts one and two go ahead and check that out but this is about Eminem and Benzino and the magazine beef so we're not going to be talking about anything that Ja Rule does against Eminem and 50 Cent since I already covered it there ain't gonna be no reason speaking with me you speak on my seat and me no speaking English so we gonna beef and keep on beefing unless you're gonna agree to meet with me in the flesh me do this one on my own Following that go to sleep diss track from Eminem calling out Ja Rule and dissing Benzino more, in March 2003, XXL responded to the source by featuring Eminem, 50 Cent, and Dr. Dre on the cover of their magazine. And in this magazine, everyone is going at Benzino and Ja Rule. In the March 2003 XXL magazine, the interviewer asked, Speaking of wanting Eminem dead, that's what Benzino has been calling for recently. Tell me about your relationship with him and the source. Eminem said, growing up, that was the magazine. That was the Bible of hip hop. Every month, me and my people would go to the store to get it. The first thing that we always look for was the hip hop quotable and then the unsigned hype. And then we look at the mics. If somebody got four mics or four and a half mics, then we went and bought your shit. Me and Proof 
and the people that we were down with, we didn't have much money. So if a record got three and a half or three, we'd take turns buying tapes to check it out and see if they had anything on it. But if the source gave it four, four and a half or five, we went out and bought it. No question. The word was golden. But now the game is fucked up. It's tainted. So now, as far as me personally and the source, I'm done. The interviewer then asked, what's led to that? Well, a lot of things Eminem said. I've been shortchanged in the magazine since I came out, and Dre has been shortchanged too. So as I mentioned earlier in the video on how this beef started, it's basically because they kept getting low mics on their albums. Then Dr. Dre was asked about this whole situation and how he felt about it because before this, he had been relatively quiet and it had been basically Eminem and 50 Cent talking most of the time. The interviewer then asked, Dre, you have been dragged into this Murder Inc. beef or the Benzino beef. How do you keep yourself from getting embroiled? Dr. Dre then says, to tell you the truth, I don't give a fuck about any of it. 50 then steps in and says, if they're smart at all, they won't say anything about Dr. Dre. People that disrespect Dre come back eventually to try and make it okay because he's going to consistently make hit records. Dr. Dre then says, and that's all I want to do. I want to make motherfucking records. I don't care about none of that bullshit. Straight up, I'm healthy. I'm rich as a motherfucker. What the fuck do I need that in my life for? So throughout the whole magazine, they were essentially explaining why they got into a battle with Benzino and the Source magazine. XXL even asked why they're cool again with Eminem because Eminem had issues with XXL a while ago. Following this, on April 15th, 2003, another DJ Green Lantern mixtape dropped, and this was Shady Invasion Part 2. And on this mixtape, there were multiple tracks going at Ja Rule and Benzino. The tracks were the intro track, The Conspiracy, Bump Heads, Hail Mary, Do Re Mi, We All Die One Day, and Keep Talking. The magazine, some motherfucking thing, you're using staples to hold it together. It's turning back into a newspaper. And y'all got something for my ass every issue. Thank you, because I keep running out of fucking tissue. And not to diss you, but God, I was sick of looking at you. At least now I can see when Nike's got a new tennis shoe. Woo! Just keep talking, Woo! keep on popping off with them jaws, because we ain't stopping. Huh. We ain't got to prove shit to y'all, so all y'all can lick the balls and keep walking. I ain't here to talk about Benzino or Ja Rule. I'm here to talk about Little Ray Ray and what I'm gonna do. So I ain't gonna mention it. He probably do. Next week, it should be out on DJ Clue. Then Benzino responded in May 2003 with his own diss track called Falling Down. And on this diss track, he was mainly calling out 50 Cent and G Unit, but then he took shots at Dr. Dre and Eminem as well. Defense first artist, Eminem's son. Three time platinum snitch, always on the run. Sacrificial meat, the machine money maker. Dre still in beats, steady saying he made him. See no spit heat, always ready, street sweeping. 50 fifty, fifty cow, hollow heat seekers. The magazine, kill the kid if I have to. Tie him up, chainsaw his legs in the bathroom. The fing leader is a trailer park bozo. Snatch him from behind, rip his spine out his torso. Following that, on June 3rd, 2003, Eminem was headlining the Hot 97 Summer Jam show with 50 Cent. And then when Eminem came out, he decided to bring out his Source Award and decided to smash it. The article says the height of Eminem's disdain would come later in the show when he had Obi Trice bring out his 2000 Source Award for Lyricist of the Year. Slim talked about his battle with the magazine and its co-owner, Ray Benzino. Take your motherfucking award back, he yelled, slamming it to the ground almost as soon as the trophy smash, the guitar riff from Lose Yourself came on, commencing another of the night's feverish moments. The next record, 8 Mile, was equally energetic. Then on July 2nd, 2003, the G-Unit Radio Part 3 mixtape, Taking It to the Streets, was released. And on this mixtape, there was a track called Shit Hits the Fan, in which Dr. Dre was responding finally to Benzino. The fuck you are! Then on September 23rd, 2003, the new studio album from Obi Trice called Cheers was released. And on this album, they featured the track Shit Hits the Fan. And on the outro track, which was a new diss track going at Benzino and Ja Rule. Following that, and in August 2003, 50 Cent graced the cover of XXL Magazine. And in this cover, he decided to go at Ja Rule and Benzino a lot. And the editor at that time was Elliot Wilson. And he decided to even go at Benzino and The Source Magazine and called them out saying that they're way out of their league and XXL Magazine is going way past The Source Magazine and is becoming the number one dominant source for hip-hop. However, Benzino did not like this 
And according to Benzino, he went over to their offices. He saw Elliot Wilson and apparently did something to him to get him to apologize. Elliot Wilson, I went up to the offices and seen dude and dude apologized immediately. Yeah, you know, I don't want to know, tell you what took place, you know, because it ain't about incrimination, incrimination. But yeah, I went up there and he, he, he actually apologized in front of the whole staff. Had him apologize in front of the whole staff. So, you know. Following this, on October 7th, 2003, there was a new album from the hip-hop group Booyah Tribe called West Coast or Nostra. And on track four, which was called 9-11, it featured Eminem. And Eminem was taking subliminal shots towards Ja Rule and Benzino. Nobody saw it happen. All because the jaws are flapping and you couldn't stop yapping and took it past rapping. It ain't about the music no more. It's about trying to show off. And it feels like any minute the bomb is about to go off. Following this, just a month later, on November 7th, 2003, the Eminem mixtape straight from the lab leaked. And this wasn't an official Eminem mixtape. This was something that Eminem's brother's friend accidentally leaked online. He took the tracks, posted them, and a lot of these tracks were recorded a long time ago. Unfortunately, though, a lot of these tracks featured disses against Ja Rule and Benzino. Tracks such as Monkey See, Monkey Do, Bully, and Come On In. I'm withholding my anger, though I'd like to be the stranger of this punk ass little pussy's puny neck. It's my right to insist that he acknowledge my existence, but he just displays complete lack of respect. That's what he says to himself as he uses magazines to trash me as he sits with both his feet up at his desk. After all these diss tracks have come out, Benzino had been relatively quiet and hadn't released anything. But on November 18th, 2003, all of that would change. On that date, Benzino and the Source magazine held a press conference and revealed that Eminem had old tapes and old songs where he was using racial slurs. They revealed an old freestyle that Eminem recorded when he was roughly 15 years old called Foolish Pride. The tape that three white kids from Detroit walked into Dave's office, brought and said, listen, this is the real Eminem and we're, and, and we're tired of it. We got to make this the same way that you guys have treated Mike Tyson. You guys are treating Kobe Bryant. You guys have treated R. Kelly, O.J. Simpson. We can, we can hear the music now. I'll get straight to the point. Black girls are bitches. That's why I'm going to tell you you better pull up your bridges. Because all that cash is making your ass drag from the boyfriend you gang. And that's pretty bad. I can't think of a more, you know, important and pivotal moment uh, in our history and the source's history, you know, our personal histories than, than right here tonight. Black girls and white girls just don't mix because black girls are dumb and white girls are good shit. White girls are good. I like white girls. Black women are bad. White women are good. I don't care if he's redeemed himself now. That's not the message. And if that's who he is, then he has to be held accountable for that. I want to see what he's going to say now. The ball's in his, is in his court now. And Eminem immediately responded to the allegations that he was racist and released a statement saying, Ray Benzino, Dave Mays, and The Source have had a vendetta against me, Shady Records, and our artists for a long time. The tape they played today was something I made out of anger, stupidity, and frustration when I was a teenager. I just broken up with my girlfriend, who is African American, and I reacted like an angry, stupid kid I was. I hope people will take it for the foolishness that it was, not for what somebody is trying to make it today. Following the statement, the source was going to distribute an Eminem CD with all the racial slurs on its February edition of their magazine, but Eminem stopped that because he ended up suing the source right after the statement was made. In legal papers filed in Manhattan Federal Court Monday, Eminem's Shady Records is seeking an injunction preventing the magazine from distributing the CD in its February edition. Eminem claims the magazine's owners and chief executive David Mays have breached federal copyright laws by reproducing the previously unreleased recording. He wants unspecified damages. After that, on January 16th, 2004, DJ Green Lantern released the Shady Invasion Part 3 mixtape, and on track number three, Eminem is spitting a freestyle going at Benzino. I got a riddle, what's little and talks big with midget arms and queenie white filling in the middle that'll do anything to throw dirt on my name if it means walking a whole Mediterranean. Isn't it Albanian, Armenian, Iranian, Tasmanian? No, it's Dave Raymond and oh, oh sorry, yo, so sorry, whoa, but that was a long time ago when I was just Joe Schmo rapping in Joe Blow's basement. I apologize for it before, so either accept it or you don't. 
Following that, in February 2004, Eminem graced the cover of the Source magazine once again, but it was all for the wrong reasons. They revealed a lot of information on why Eminem was a racist. They even attached a CD with the magazine, but due to Eminem's lawsuit, they could only preview 20 seconds of the racist tracks that Eminem recorded a while ago. Following this, on March 30th, 2004, Eminem did a track with Obi Trice called I'm Gone on the DJ K Slay album, The Street Sweeper Volume 2. And on this track, he subliminally goes at Benzino. And I hope you got the heart to fight, cause you gon' have to. You ain't got the smarts to write something that good. You try to come back at me with, what you gonna do? Try to outrap me with that happy shit. You motherfuckers crack me up. Talking about you gonna smack me up. Y'all won't even back me up. Following this, much of the battle between Eminem and Benzino had gone off wax and into courtrooms because they were suing each other left and right. But Eminem had to get a lot off his chest in the music still, and on November 12, 2004, he released his new album Encore. And on three tracks, he was addressing a lot of the situations between Benzino, The Source Magazine, and Ja Rule. On the track Yellow Brick Road, Eminem addressed the racist tapes and apologized. On the track Big Weenie, he made fun of Benzino and said that he'll never be the rapper that Eminem is and that Benzino is jealous because of Eminem's talent. Then on the track Like Toy Soldiers, he essentially ended the beef between Ja Rule and Benzino and said that he's done with it. With the Benzino, it don't matter. I never drag him in battles that I can handle unless I absolutely have to. I'm supposed to set an example. Now the owner of it has got a grudge against me for nothing. Well, fuck it, that motherfucker could get it too. Fuck him. I'll walk away from it all before I let it go any further. What the intent of the song, what the intent was to do, is to just say, from at least from our side, like, this is a chapter in, in, in our lives that we want to close and we want to move on from this beef. Also around this time when Eminem was promoting his Encore album, he ended up stopping by Tim Westwood's show alongside D12, and him and Proof ended up spitting a freestyle over the Got It Twisted beat, and some of the lines were going at Benzino and Ja Rule. However, Benzino felt a different way, and on January 5th, 2005, he responded to Eminem's Like Toy Soldiers track and video. He released a track and video called Look Into My Eyes, and this video essentially picks up where Eminem's Like Toy Soldiers left off. And in that song and video, Benzino takes blame for murdering Proof. And this is crazy because as we know, a year and a few months later, in April 2006, Proof was actually shot and killed during an altercation in a nightclub in Detroit. Yeah. He's dead, he's dead. They killed him, Jimmy. Calm, calm down. Em, calm down. What what happened? I told you this would happen. This shit is crazy. Uh, Marshal? I told you there was going to be some casualties here. Um, we have to look at this as, as a sacrifice. Um, as long as this doesn't happen to people like us, you know, we're all right. No, I want out. I want out. I'm scared. I've always been scared. This isn't me. If Eminem want to squash beef, tell him come. Where you at? Need him anywhere. He can bring his soul on. After this song and video, like I said, Eminem was over the beef and battle that he had with Benzino and The Source magazine. He even decided to drop the lawsuit against The Source on March 23rd, 2005. His attorney, Donald David, said the case is being dropped because there is nothing left to win. The judge already decided we have the copyright and he awarded us $131,000 in sanctions. So the case has no purpose anymore. Following that, on April 8th, 2005, Benzino officially quit working for The Source magazine. He said, I want to step down from the magazine and sell my stock effective immediately. I've consumed too much with this whole conflict thing, the Eminem lawsuit, and I'm sick of it. I don't want it to take away from what The Source has built up, but I got issues with The Source and magazines like that. Everyone is too politically correct. They're not thinking about the little guy who can't afford to pay for high-priced ads. It's like a monopoly. Following his retirement, the last diss track on Wax was released from Proof on April 25th, 2005 off his Grown Man Shit mixtape. A track was called Oil Can Harry. After this last diss track on Wax, everyone went their separate ways. 
Eminem started working on his music still. He ended up disappearing due to drug problems, but he kept releasing music after that. Benzino ended up taking a new job and developing a new company called Hip Hop Weekly. He also ended up appearing on Love and Hip Hop, and now he's continuously doing that. Benzino has been apologizing to Eminem throughout the years for what he's done and why he even started the beef. He's apologized in 2011, 2012, and various other times. I mean, the shots that I took, I guess, at his family and everything, I apologize for that. Because sometimes, you know, I look at that, put it in my shoes. You don't want people going at your kids, your family, because then that takes it out there. Uh, to this day, I've never even, we've never been even 50 feet in front of each other. So, you know what I mean? Hey, you know what I'm saying? Before it's all over for Zeno, who knows? You know what I'm saying? We might be... 60, 70 years old, run across each other and, and, and sit back and laugh about this. You know, I mean, I, I would like that. You know, I don't know how he feels, but, you know. However, when Eminem released his revival album, which is his latest album, on January 21st, 2018, earlier this year, Benzino decided to call the album Trash. He said on Twitter, Can somebody tell these weirdo M fans that in this culture of hip hop, they are the subculture? meaning nobody gives a flying fuck about anything they have to say when it comes to him right now. The album is trash, so take the L and move on. Thank you and good night. So clearly he has some feelings towards Eminem still, even though he's apologized in the past and has said he's gotten over the situation. Eminem, however, has not said a single thing about Benzino since 2004 when he was interviewed by MTV about the situation. Other than that, he hasn't said a single thing. He's moved on completely. Now let's talk about who won the battle portion of the beef, which is the short-term portion of the beef in the midst of the battle, who won. And then let's talk about who won the war portion of the beef after the battle settled down, who has longevity, who is still around. In terms of who won the battle portion, it's very clear that Eminem won simply because he is the rapper in this situation. He's very lyrical and kept coming at Benzino with a bunch of diss tracks that were way beyond what Benzino could do lyrically. Although, in my opinion, Benzino had two great diss tracks, which was Die Another Day and that track that's called Falling Down, which dissed 50 Cent more than Eminem. Those two diss tracks, in my opinion, were dope and were overlooked. People just completely called him trash, even though I felt like he had some great bars in those. But overall, as we know, Eminem just kept going at him and didn't let his foot off his neck at all. So Eminem clearly wins this, and he tried to get Ja Rule involved to help him, but as we know, Ja Rule couldn't really do much against the juggernaut of Eminem, 50 Cent, and Dr. Dre at that time. When Benzino released the Racist Tapes 2, that was a great move, but it just shows how big Eminem is as a star that it didn't affect him at all. So clearly Eminem won the battle portion. Now let's talk about the war portion. This one is clear as well, although both sides are winning. Eminem clearly won the war portion when it comes to the music because he kept releasing albums regardless of his time off after the beef. He kept releasing albums. They kept selling. He kept getting number ones. Meanwhile, Benzino was trying to start Hip Hop Weekly, and it was doing pretty good. He then got on Love & Hip Hop, which is doing very well for him. A lot of people clown a lot of artists and celebrities that go on that show. They say that the celebrities are dead and nobody cares about them. But Benzino has well over 1 million followers on Instagram, so clearly people care. But if we had to choose musical careers, everyone would take Eminem's. Clearly, I mean, he kept getting number ones, kept selling millions and millions of records. Benzino dropped a few projects here and there, but nobody really cared. So overall, Eminem won the battle portion and won the war portion, which shouldn't be no surprise to anyone watching this video. Well, that's it for this episode of Who Really Won. I hope you enjoyed this video. This was the first Eminem beef I decided to cover simply because it tied into the 50 Cent and Ja Rule beef video that I did a while ago. So let me know in the comments below what you guys think. I'm currently going to be working on the Jay-Z versus Nas Who Really Won video. Once I reach 200,000 subscribers, I'll drop that video right after. So stay tuned and subscribe for that. 
If you want to support this channel further, you can do so at patreon.com backslash diverse mentality for just a dollar a month or more. You can help support this channel further. A link is in the description below for that. So like, comment, share, and definitely subscribe. I do videos like this daily on hip hop news and much, much more. So definitely subscribe. Follow me on Twitter and on Instagram at QuakeGW. Like us on Facebook, and I'll see you guys in the next episode. Peace.